Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 18th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In diaries today, we have a plea by Daniel about two-factor authentication for webmail or email in general, which is in particular important as email still remains to be one of the preferred attack vectors. And well, ransomware, of course, being the goal these days that attackers are going for. And there's nothing better to craft a plausible email if it's possible to compromise an email account of an insider or a trusted external source. So as Daniel puts it, don't be the company that emails the ransomware to the victim. Implement two-factor authentication, in particular with everybody moving to web-based email systems. Well, uh, it's just a matter of time until your users will get fished and two-factor authentication is probably the simplest uh, defense that actually works in this particular case. And talking about uh, ransomware, you better check your cybersecurity insurance. AXA, one of the biggest insurance companies out there, just announced that they will no longer cover ransom payments. Interestingly, they made that move after becoming a victim themselves. Haven't uh, seen anything from other insurances, but of course, as so often, I would expect other insurances uh, to pull along as a big player like AXA is making this move. And one of the vulnerabilities highlighted in last week's Microsoft Patch Tuesday was CVE 2021-31166. This was uh, the remote code execution vulnerability in HTTP.sys. This is not yet a full remote code execution exploit. It just triggers a blue screen of death. And well, it only works against specific versions of Windows in particular, the latest version of Windows Server Core, so the version without a GUI. But this certainly highlights the need to start patching these affected machines. Again, only the most recent versions of a Windows Server, and again, only the core versions as well as Windows Server 10 were vulnerable. So many of your servers and workstation probably don't need the patch in particular since workstations uh, usually don't expose uh, HTTP.sys, but they may in certain cases. So better check if the patch is needed or not. The GitHub repository uh, with uh, the proof of concept exploit also includes a fairly detailed walkthrough as to the nature of the vulnerability. So certainly some hints here for people to develop additional exploits. And in general, uh, cross-site scripting is one of the more difficult vulnerabilities uh, to prevent in web applications. And more recently, of course, with more JavaScript on decline and JavaScript pulling in content from various sources, DOM-based cross-site scripting has become more and more of a problem. And defending against it has particularly been tricky if you had to accept HTML input. The problem here is that different browsers parse HTML slightly differently. And in particular, invalid HTML can often lead to unexpected uh, effects. The current approach has usually been to use a library like DOM Purify. That's sort of one of the big ones that developers are using to clean up uh, the HTML code and then validate it. But that has been uh, pretty problematic uh, with browsers, of course, being a very uh, moving target with uh, new features and new uh, quirks sort of being added all the time. Now, Google and Mozilla apparently got together working on a new API that should be standard in future browsers. It's currently just no unofficial draft, so not implemented in any browsers yet. But what this will be doing is it will be creating a sanitizer API inside the browser that a developer could easily call from JavaScript to clean up and validate HTML before it's being displayed 
inside the browser's DOM. If you are a developer and if you are creating uh, applications that may be susceptible to DOM-based cross-site scripting, which is probably any web application these days, you certainly uh, should keep an eye out for this spec and uh, keep watching it and see at what point it becomes something that you could take advantage of in your code. And then Sans EDU published today our first research journal. Uh, this is a journal we put together with some selected research papers that our students wrote over the last couple of years. So uh, we try to keep them really applied and useful to others and figured, hey, uh, maybe nice to sort of uh, create a collection of some of uh, the better papers that were published. I will leave a link in the show notes for details and you can always also find these papers in the SANS reading room. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.